Next is OP54. It's on Meteorological Associations of Leptospirosis in Different Climate Zones of Sri Lanka. A time series analysis. Uh, the authors are Varnasekar YPJN, Angampodi SB, Ranavaka HCG, Degam Demba Dembata Pitya DR WNK Vijay Singh PATAB Devapriya IKS Koralage Gedara KIS Abenaika R and the presenting author is Varna Sekar YPJN. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Meteorological associations of leptospirosis in different climate zones in Sri Lanka, a time series analysis. This is basically a statistical analysis. Leptospirosis is the most widespread zoonotic disease with a significant global burden and Sri Lanka is considered as a hotspot for leptospirosis. We know that our main priority is dengue, but that is because of the case number. But if you look at the mortality, it is five times higher than dengue hemorrhagic fever and 50 times higher than dengue fever. That's why we are interested in leptospirosis. And recently published systematic review indicated that, again, this 1.7 is an underestimated number. It must be around 7% if, uh, if we have a true estimation. What are the causes for underestimation? Under notification, especially in uh, OPD setting and outpatient department uh, and private sector, and we don't have really good diagnostic tests which are usable at the acute setting, and different zero hours of leptospirosis Leptospira causing diverse patterns of leptospirosis and dif diverse immune response and diverse climatic conditions. This is like a puzzle. We need to fill, we need extensive investigations to fill all these gaps and understand the true picture. And here I am presenting a, a work done to fill small puzzle that is diverse climatic condition. Because of diverse climatic conditions, it will be difficult to predict leptospirosis leading to under underestimation. When we are talking about, uh, when we are talking about predictions, there are models created by targeting one district or few districts, and there are no much multivariate models. But we can't say that we are getting outbreaks confined to Kalambu district or Gampa district like that. We are getting outbreaks targeting a total zone. So we need zonal based models to predict leptospirosis. For that, my objectives are to predict leptospirosis using previously published uh, leptospirosis data and predict leptospirosis by combining leptospirosis data with climate data. For that, I used autoregressive integrated moving average technique, that is ARIMA technique, and autoregressive distributed lag model, that is ARDL models. So I don't have time to explain these models. I obtained data from meteorological department and used the published data by epidemiology unit. And from January 2007 to April 2019. The next barrier is we have district level data, but districts and climate zones are overlapping. So if you look at the diagrams, you can understand that. To overcome this, I use principal component fact analysis and ended up with having three clearly demarcating uh, three zones, which, which is different from routine wet zone, dry zone, and intermediate zone. So these are dry zone, wet zone, and highlands, indicating that central highlands behaving differently to the wet zone and dry zone. Monthly rainfall, uh, monthly rainy days, and uh, relative humidity fluctuating together with leptospirosis while solar radiation and temperature fluctuate oppositely to the leptospirosis. And this observation is similar in dry zone, highlands and wet zone. I have a lot to tell about these models. These are the models I created using the previously reported leptospirosis cases. But look at the three models. There are three, the three models are completely different indicating that we are dealing with three different leptospirosis patterns in three zones. These are the models combined with meteorological variables or multivariate uh, models and the dark colored lines are the predicted ones and the light color ones are the observed ones. So we Almost the two lines are overlapping because of that we can predict that these, is, these are good models. Anyway, we have validated these models statistically as well. Another important observation is, uh, even though we are talking much about rainfall and leptospirosis, rainy days is the more significant factor than 
rainfall indicating that the prolonged lake wetness may be associated with leptospirosis rather than having a single high rainfall so we conclude that zonal based statistical modeling instead of administrative districts is a better approach to understand this underestimation and to describe the total picture of leptospirosis and we need further exploration on how is the survival of leptospira host especially rats in different climatic conditions and how is the survival of leptospira in different climatic conditions and how is the immune response of leptospira uh, lep uh, against leptospirosis among humans uh, in different climate conditions to understand the total picture of leptospirosis thank you very much thank you i open for discussion now on my uh, <laughs> comprehension uh, so what are what exactly are the variables that you need to predict uh, leptospirosis uh, you know say in the next month or the following month depending on your meteorological uh, uh, data so what data elements do you need for so your predictive, so predictive, predictive model right yeah so basically we need three types like the cases the leptospirosis cases and meteorological uh, variables and uh, epidemiological variables here we consider the climate conditions if i got because i didn't have time so after applying all these things dry zone it's rainy days that is only the rainy days with leptospirosis cases and in wet zone it's rainy days rainfall and temperature as positively and rainfall has some negative associations as well because now when i went through the literature i found that heavy rainfall even though we are thinking that rainfall can uh, increase leptospirosis but heavy rainfall can destroy the habitats of of rats and other things because of that we can uh, expect so this might be the reason but we don't know this is just statistical analysis and highlands again different it's rainy days and temperature no negative associations what is the limitation of a mathematical model uh limitation that is uh, now there are several limitations when you are talking about mathematical model but in this kind of thing so it might not be representing the true picture sometimes if we haven't adjusted for the other affecting variables like confounding factors and other things yeah, so you it's as much as you know your uh, the factors that you Uh, think that are uh, affecting the model no yeah there may be factors outside what you have thought of the another thing uh, that we need to consider is epidemiological variables the mainly like the distance to the farm and distance distance like like the socio demographic factors but those are essential to predict not like zonal level uh, modeling but we when we are assessing small area or something thank you very much uh, Please give a round of applause to our speaker.